Hello there, this is Steve here in Sydney on the Lay Gnosis website, truebluehealer.com, where in just 20 minutes you can get physical evidence of your divine spark activation, and that will lead to um, vivid messaging dreams in about a week's time, uh, ultimately an internal mentoring voice, and physical signals to boot. Uh, to make it very clear to you that you're not imagining this. It's not a dream state you're going into or any kind of strange state. It's the real state you're supposed to be in all the time. And after a few weeks, you will realize you're surrounded by sleepwalkers. Okay. Um, So having said that, I'll get started today. Uh, Information overload we all seem to be suffering from at the moment. The internet is such a powerful uh, supplier of news uh, that uh, it's possible to be knocked from pillar to post by the events coming out of Europe currently, which is the uh, the truck running into the crowd and injuring hundreds of people, uh, killing 78 or something or 80 people, um, that sort of thing. And the coup in Turkey, which is uh, leaves one's head spinning. It seems to be such a badly organised coup done by amateurish uh, people uh, uh, 20 years old or something uh, who were told to turn up somewhere for an exercise. So you, it raises the question, is the coup a genuine coup, so badly organised they didn't even know how to turn off the TV station? Um, is it an inside job done by Erdogan himself to strengthen his hold on power by, um, by putting out a bait for all the... Um, uh, secular leaning officers in the army who consider themselves um, supporters of Ataturk, the Jew who reformed Turkish Muslims, okay, and made them secular, reformed their writing, took them away from Arabic writing and switched them to European alphabetic character writing, that sort of thing. Uh, His name was Ataturk, given to him by the Turkish parliament because he wanted all Turkish people to have modern European style names and to dispense with Arab... Arab writing and Arab names and Arab culture as much as possible, even though Ataturk himself was Jewish and worked for the Rothschilds. Ah. And if you want to know, Ataturk played a role in the destruction of the uh, the uh, Armenian people. 1.5 million Armenians were actually killed by um, uh, Turks in 1915 at the behest of the um, the Rothschild revolutionaries who had taken over the Ottoman Empire, okay? So, um, trying to keep uh, Turkey straight on the secular path, which is obviously more productive and more useful, uh, hasn't worked at this time, but they would have been the greatest threat to Erdogan, so he may have actually... It could be an inside job. Same as you can put up a website with a certain opinion and it attracts people, like bees to a honeypot, of certain matching opinions. So, uh, just putting out the word that Deku's... Uh, going down soon and uh, who wants to be in this is a good way of finding out who's on your side and who is not. So it could have been a fake coup. There's already been beheadings by the good Turkish Islamic people. Um, Some graphic footage shown on uh, uh, YouTube already. Overwhelming news this is. It's mildly amusing now. We've got Pat Condell leading the charge, the wordsmith, Uh, denouncing all these latest Islamic acts of terror as nothing to do with Islam, nothing to do with the Quran, totally divorced from it. He's humorously mimicking all the um, European elites, including Obama, uh, all the people saying that anything to do with Islam has got nothing to do with Islam, and don't you dare connect it because it makes you a racist. Uh, It's now being parodied all over the internet, and so uh, it's being parroted. Uh, by numerous uh, <laughs> websites and talking heads on YouTube uh, we're just waiting for the government to say it. Certainly in this last case with the truck, he's just a deeply disturbed man, a criminal person who should never have been allowed into France in the first place. He's married to it on the rocks. He uh, uh, drugs, alcohol, um, marijuana, whatever, uh, um, psychotropic medications. Um, probably benzodiazepines that provoke murderous behaviour. It's a common picture in um, America where people come off their medications and commit massive uh, shootouts. Um, That's got nothing to do with Islam, even though he's screaming Allah Akbar and shooting people with a pistol, having killed 70 people under the wheels of his truck. Nothing to do with Islam. Do you remember that? One wonders what it's going to take for the um, uh, 
the left-wing regressive intellectuals that seem to be infesting governments all around the world, the elites around the world, keep mouthing these things, nothing to do with Islam, and you're all being racist by condemning a particular section of society uh, by identifying them all the time as producing these people. You're all racist, you see. Well, I don't know how long the intellectuals can keep Think, keep believing they can corral and control the common people by using four or five playground names to call people. Uh, it's not going to be enough uh, sooner or later. And the elites are the, the last people to figure this out. And they're still mouthing all these um, silly uh, counter arguments, li- literally from like playground name calling. Uh, so I consider these people unteachable and I would suspect it's something to do. I'll give you one possible explanation. There, there's, a, there's about three or four explanations. One of them is their brains aren't mature enough to be able to recognise reality. They're so hell-bent on bending reality to suit their the ideology installed in them at university by the social justice movement, which is ultimately Jewish. Um, they don't seem to know that they're Jewish puppets doing all these uh, social justice things. There's another explanation is that you that people come here to live a life in the physical of a certain flavour and a, a, a certain ambience and certain waypoints, achievements have to be met along the way. And this might explain why so many of these left-wing people, these left-wing agitators who get into government, um, seem to be quite unteachable and unresponsive to reality and discussion. Um, the, the left-wing authoritarian bent they have, they, they, they have to control everybody else by name-calling name and making laws to make speech uh, illegal, such as in uh, Germany, where you can now, if you write on Facebook, you don't like migrants, you can be jailed. Uh, just ha- one of, it just happened in Germany, for goodness sake. So that's a disease uh, fi- afflicting society today, and it's a very bizarre situation. The problem is that all our elite governments have been infiltrated by these left-wing idiots who come out of university uh, full of Jewish academic influence. And the whole idea is to generate civil war in Western countries. And it's happening. It's coming. We can sense it. The French uh, intelligence agency recently made a warning just the other day that civil war is coming. They've got evidence that... um, um, right-wing groups are stockpiling weapons to start a civil war. Now, be careful. Brit- uh, French intelligence does a lot of false flag attacks in Africa. They're always doing coups and knocking over governments, pulling them down, that sort of thing. Um, uh, the, the, pa- the first Paris massacre was... Um, some of the weapons were obtained through um, French intelligence, did you know? So they're on both sides of the fence. You're not really sure whose side intelligence agencies are on, because the French one is known to be uh, owned and operated by Zionists. Okay, so they want civil war. That's why they're getting people ready for it, as far as I can tell. Civil war is what Jewish people want all over the world. They want everyone else to kill each other while they sit there uh, laughing with delight. Okay, that's the sort of satanic religion that they have. It's in their Talmud. You can read it. I invite you to inform yourself about Talmudic Judaism. This this mad, mad world you live in, this asylum they call planet Earth, which could be such a wonderful place. Um, It's possible to to feel yourself under attack with all the, um, the idiocy that seems to control nations. And what I've got for you is a good piece of news. Um, from little old Australia, back side of the world. Um, a politician's just come to the front again. She's a, a well-worn politician, had a very checkered career. Her name is Pauline Hanson. One thing we can say about her is she is definitely not controlled by Jews. Um, she is famous for having come out of a fish and chip shop. That's her claim to fame. But... Um, She's not an attractive politician in the sense that she's got like a whining, ratchety voice and she's unpleasant to sort of listen to. Nothing like a glossy TV announcer or a professional speaker who's been to three universities. 
But she does have an uncanny knack over the last 15, 20 years for saying what Australians are thinking, what the common people are thinking. And she gets ridiculed heaped on her uh, by the elites, the two major parties. And uh, But what, while they're ridiculing her, guess what they do? Um, they quietly adopt her policies. She invented the stop the boats policy and offshore processing. Yeah, Mrs. Fish and Chips invented that. Now, she's so good at tapping um, uh, sort of like the well of public sentiment that the major parties listen to what she says, carry out what she does. They generally just rebadge it. But she suggested 20 years ago pulling out of the United Nations so they would have less control over who migrates to this country. Um, and now 20 years later, I'm advocating that too. Relocalisation, disconnect from the United Nations is good for every country and start again with a blank slate. Because the United Nations is basically um, called by the Jews a trapdoor into the worldwide Jewish concentration camp. That is written down by Jews boasting what the UN is, how much they control it. Um, so they've got the 10 by 30 foot um, rooms for your grandchildren to be born into in the Agenda 30, uh, put together by non-government organisations in the UN, who are just people who get there by cronyism. Now, Pauline Hanson is a colourful figure. By being so good at mouthing off and saying publicly, in a very politically incorrect way, exactly what the common people are thinking in Australia, she's been able to get sometimes a million votes in elections and greatly subtracting from the uh, majority parties, the two great parties, you see. So she's considered an, en an enemy of politics by both sides of politics in Australia. And she's actually been jailed to get her out of politics. On trumped up charges, some technicality about Queensland uh, uh, political party law didn't match up with New South Wales political party law. On a technicality, because the laws were different, she was jailed for three years, but she, it was overturned after nine months. But who do you think put her in jail? Well, it was none less than um, Tony Abbott, the former uh, Prime Minister of Australia, who saw her as such a huge threat to mainstream politics in Australia. He paid for it out of his own pocket to get her in jail on trumped-up charges, basically. Okay. Well, she's now been re-elected to the Senate. I think she's got a six-year term. And she has a wonderful agenda, a single-issue agenda, which is she wants an Australian Government Royal Commission into Islam to decide and determine finally with talented people, clever people, intellectuals, whatever, lawyers galore, uh, whether Islam is really a religion or not, or whether it's a political conquest doctrine. Um, and she's getting massive, massive, massive political support from um, Andrew Bolt, who's an Australian political commentator syndicated in many newspapers, and um, he's a former speechwriter for an Australian Prime Minister, uh, a Labor Prime Minister, and now he's um, a supporter of the Abbott camp, the right-wing conservative wing of our uh, Liberal Party in Australia, who just scraped in with the narrow majority. They were stunned. These are the elites, again, think they're born to rule, stunned by the number of people who voted against them. Absolutely amazing. They can't believe it. And it's Brexit's attached to it, and so is Donald Trump. The anti-establishment sentiment is sweeping the Western world, and I'm very glad to see this. So this is some good news after all the stuff you're reading about France and, and Europe and Germany, OK? Whether Pauline Hanson's um, government royal commission into the true meaning of Islam and finally get a legal definition will ever get up, I don't know. But I suspect as atrocities amount and they're all Islamic um, they're all Muslim atrocities have you noticed Buddhists don't do this neither do Eskimos um, funny that isn't it um, then we have um, mounting figures I think maybe when we get to say maybe a thousand Frenchmen dying per week uh, due to Muslim attacks 
Um, I'm wondering if the left-wing intellectuals will wake up to that. But that's going to push rising sentiment for an inquiry into Islam to finally decide what it is. Because it's a two-pronged attack. They always claim it to be the religion of peace. And Islam's got nothing to do with the latest beheadings. Um, but in fact, it's, got all, it's all about that. Islam is about beheadings. It says so chapter after chapter after chapter. Um, no one ever reads the Quran, it turns out. I've asked lots of people, uh, what do you know about uh, Islam? No, you claim you're a Muslim. Tell me about you know the death of Muhammad. And no one can tell me how Muhammad died. So strangely, I know more about it than they did, for goodness sake. So because Muslims themselves never read their own Quran and they depend entirely on what imams say every Friday or what imams say at weddings and funerals, um, Muslim people tend to have a personal potted version of what they've been told what Islam really is, you see. And it's been discovered that the imams make things up as they go along. They just make up Islamic quotes, Quran quotes. Uh, they are lazy, they don't read the Quran either, and they've been tested by being videotaped. And they reel off verses here and there of both the Quran and the Bible saying one religion's better than the other, etc. And um, they get all the references wrong, and they just keep preaching endlessly. And it's got so bad, that's another piece of good news, in Egypt... The government's now going to hand out a speech that must be read out every Friday. It's the same speech in every mosque. And um, so you won't be able to step out of the mental asylum and then start making lunatic speeches at the mosque on Fridays anymore in Egypt. They've had enough of these firebrand maniacs preaching all over the damn place in Egypt. So they are reforming Islam there by government intervention, government appointed experts who just want to live peacefully, for goodness sake, uh, which is unprecedented uh, in the Quran. It's just not allowed. <laughs> so there's so much confusion by Muslims not reading the Quran, uh, fanatics reading the Quran and finding whatever they need to justify violence. It's as clear as day. You've only got to read read the Quran. The best person to, to read the Quran out to you and tell you what it really means seems to be David Wood. Uh, he's a former atheist who became a Christian. He's a natural sort of student come intellectual and happily reels off verses of the, the Bible and the Quran. He's very, very good at it. And uh, he absolutely squashes uh, is Islamic people in debates. They can't debate because their IQ is just lower. They just don't have the verbal skills or the capacity to quote the Quran as it really is. They just don't know. Uh, he thrashes them with his knowledge of the Quran. And there's quite a few other people doing this, but he's a leader. And I'm just, um, I'm just hoping he isn't Jewish and he's not CIA. I just hope he isn't. <laughs> like everything else seems to be, Facebook and everything else, so... Ah, oh. so something to look forward to is a breath of fresh air from Australia, of all places, from the fish and chip lady who's demanding a royal commission into whether Islam is actually a genuine religion, because it's not in Italy, you know. It doesn't get tax-free status in Italy, and there's only one mosque in Italy. Did you know that? Um, so presidents already said it can be defined as a non-religion it can be defined as a non-religion, something to look forward to. Now, Andrew Bolt's uh, been given death threats. He's a prominent political commentator. He's been threatened by ISIS very recently. And uh, um, Pauline Hansen's got a, a never-ending string of death threats from Muslims, you see. So um, he's syndicated in every newspaper, and he seems to have his pen poised ready to type anything she says and support it. So that's a powerful backlash beginning with a couple of elite people in Australia. Now, if ever this Royal Commission gets up and we get definitive comparisons between, say, Christianity and um, uh, Islam, and uh, say Christianity says thou shalt not kill, but Islam says you must kill to go to heaven. It's the only way guaranteed to get there. You've got to kill an unbeliever. That's a radical comparison to start with. That's a good starting point that will get through to anybody, okay? What kind of a religion is it that says you must kill people, for goodness sake? Is that really a religion or a political conquest uh, uh, manifesto, for goodness sake? 
So I hope it gets up. And with the, the growing casualties in Europe, I think there's more. There's a growing chance of it happening. Here in Australia, um, we've got the highest per capita jihadis produced in the world, and it was predicted. By in the 1980s, by our own uh, immigration department, they said if you bring in people from three cities where there's a war going on in northern uh, Lebanon, you, their children are going to grow up and be monsters and become criminals, drug dealers, and terrorists. And lo and behold, it's happened. And the only thing that protects Australia from all these jihadis growing up, these 20 year old mutants, is the fact that they're stupid, unbelievably stupid, even after their passports. Um, have been taken by the police, they're still doing all their plotting on Facebook uh, in plain language and they talk on their phones to each other and the police just um, tap all their phones, for goodness sake, and they get arrested. And there's a guy being caught. Um, I can never, never can pronounce their names because their names are so difficult. Um, but there's a fellow just been found guilty of sending seven people to ISIS uh, to die in Syria, and in fact, two of them ended up in different um, ISIS factions, and they ended up fighting each other and basically killing each other in the same battle, for goodness sake. Um, and the man who sent them just be, faces about 30 years in jail, and he's on benefits and always has been. He's never had a job, and he's got two wives on benefits also. So that's happening all over the Western world, and we're only saved by their stupidity, their low IQ, their inability to be creative and ingenious. Um, oh, for goodness sake, it really distresses me that the only thing between us and them that's protecting us is their stupidity. There's a long line of these subnormal people who just want to sit on benefits and send people to be killed in the Middle East. Um, there's a long line of them queued up going to jail. It'll probably go on forever. It has been noticed by criminologists here that all the uh, jihadi incidents we've had in Australia come from, wait for it, two families. They all know each other. They're all related. So it's a gene problem, okay? So we've got to go back to eugenics again. We've got to revisit eugenics, which became a naughty word after World War II, didn't it? But we may have to... Look at that again too. Some a bit of revolution, a bit of wake up in our thinking. I'll be making up a web page. I haven't done it yet, uh, with a few newspaper extracts of Pauline Hanson, so you can quickly come up to speed on what she's done about her checkered political career and the pole position she's in to lead a charge against Islam uh, with major uh, public publicists' support in the form of Andrew Bolt. He's actually made video conversations with her on television. They're on YouTube. I'll find it for you. And uh, if, if the Royal Commission ever gets up in Australia, its outcome, which could take years, will echo around the world and be used as a standard. It'll be copied. It'll be picked up by other nations because it's going to have to uh, come. Uh, the Quran's going to have to be looked at by lawyers. That's what it needs. OK, you need, you need like a legal opinion uh, by people who know what they're doing. And lawyers do know that stuff. Um, already there's um, headscarf columnists in the Murdoch papers saying Pauline Hanson hasn't got a hope in hell because the Quran is so wonderfully complicated. Nobody can understand it. How could you have any, uh, an inquiry into something that nobody can understand? It's such a big subject. Well, I think it's amazingly easy for people with higher IQs. She obviously doesn't have a high IQ, this stupid columnist. Um, I'll find that article for you. I think I've got it somewhere. <laughs> but she thinks Islam is beyond reform because of its complexity. And I say, no, it isn't. It's so fundamentally easy to compare it to other religions and other philosophies. Uh, goodness gracious, what a, what a world we live in, what a tumultuous world we live in. Um, just when we thought we'd arrived and we had modern living standard for everybody and we can sort of fix everybody, there's about six or seven groups wanting to exterminate us. Um, maybe the white people should start an extermination party to exterminate the exterminationists first. Um, would that be racist? I don't know, because exterminationists are not really a race, are they? Hmm. They'd have to think of another playground taunt to call us. But... Um, 
That's what we're up against at the moment, gang.